June 29th, 2020. This is the Wrestling Inc. Podcast. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Raj Geary. Uh, Matt Morgan is on his way. He'll be here shortly. Going to talk about Raw tonight. Uh, an interesting show. Very different. Different than we've had in recent weeks. Well, interesting that it felt different. They had such good momentum these past couple weeks. I think with COVID and some of the roster being out, um, it was it was different tonight. It was a different show, and it was interesting in the ways that it was different. We saw uh, just it, it didn't have the same rhythm we've had recently. Yeah, I think you could kind of see uh, that some of the COVID stuff going on, whether it's people testing positive for COVID or not wanting to work right now, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, you could kind of see it having a, an effect. It really felt like the big show was out there filling in a lot of gaps. It was kind of used a lot on this show. Um, and, Isn't uh, it ironic at this stage when the big show is on, it doesn't feel like a big show? <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean, he's you know he's in a feud with Randy Orton. That's the the, the match they're looking to do. You know, Orton. I mean, Orton wasn't on the show tonight, um, but. Yeah, you know, I mean, they needed someone to kind of fill in Edge's spot for now. I mean, hmm. Edge is going to be out for a while, but I guess they felt like, you know, they needed to just put another another legend in right now that Randy Orton can beat until they go to, in my opinion, I, or my guess, is that they're going to Orton and Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. Big Show's kind of replaced Kane as, like, the most available legend, the most uh, available sort of senior talent that they can uh, slot in at a moment's notice. Yeah, uh, you know, he looks he looks the same. Sure. <laughs> he's looked the same for a long time. He's in great shape. Absolutely. Uh, he's you know, he's had a lot of uh a lot of surgeries and, and some some rough ones and come back and yeah. It's it's not his fault they can't put him in something else. No, no, no. <laughs> and I think that's part of it is because I think um it's the laziness of creative that when they bring him in, it's like, well, he's an attraction. You know, there's like no build, there's no thought, there's no development and character or story it's like he could show up he could be a good guy he could be a bad guy he's a utility player which uh good for him but i'm just saying that's why his segments don't pop in my opinion yeah and i don't think he should be beating two you know two of the newer stars you know two on one even though it was telling a story i still think that's the the wrong message Ryan Ramirez, 499 Super Chat. What in the world's going on with WWE Creative right now? Zero consistency. Hashtag Matt Morgan for Lead Creative, LOL. Um, and tonight, speaking of creative, they were putting over like crazy um, the horror show that we're going to see at Extreme Rules. Yeah. Is this making you more excited for it? And do you think outside of the Swamp Match, we will have much horror to speak of? I don't think so. I think it's just just the Swamp Match. We had We had kind of reported some details some exclusives on it uh, a couple of weeks ago maybe it was last week but uh yeah they're looking for an off-site location uh it's going to be triple h jeremy borash the usual crew uh they're trying to make it more action-packed almost like a terminator meets a horror movie and so uh it'll be interesting you know with bray wyatt's creativity i'm sure it'll probably be something pretty cool you know and speaking of a horror show raj speaking of the swamp it's summer and we got a Thank our sponsor, Manscaped.com. Man, you talk about the swamp, Raj. What do you got going on? When's the last and time you groomed? I actually just groomed yesterday with Manscaped. They are here to provide you with the best grooming experience. Here we are going into July. That heat goes up. You don't even want to think about, oh, what you got going on down there? The funk. The funk. And not in a good way. Funk normally means a good thing. This is funk in a bad way. Manscaped will help you prevent the funk below the belt. They provide you the best grooming experience with the Lawnmower 3.0, the best hygiene tool for the modern man. It's got the ceramic blade and skin safe technology, so no snags. Uh, yeah, you're not going to cut yourself. I think so many stories, so many times when I think, oh, this will be great. I'll kind of tighten things up a bit, get things in order. And then it's like, ah, you just noises, noises you don't want to be making bad times, swear words that, that your friends and family weren't even aware that you knew, but they can hear you from down the block because that's how much it hurts. And uh, Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0 Essentials Kit. It comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, the water-resistant cordless body trimmer. Look at that there. Comes with a pair of the Performance Boxer Briefs. Want to talk about keeping things cool, keeping things light, keeping things airy and not, not gross. 
Those performance boxer briefs are fantastic. Uh, also, a travel bag for use when you're done quarantining and you're going places again. And uh, let me tell you, you're going to be going places when you use the Perfect Package 3.0, the Lawnmower uh, 3.0, and the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. It's anti-chafing. It ensures your legs, uh, you know, your afternoon stroll uh, just, just with your feet and not with parts sticking to your legs. Uh, it's also got the Crop Reviver, the spray-on toner, which is made with soothing aloe and witch hazel extracts to give you a boost where it counts, just feeling fresh throughout the day with Manscaped. Subscribers to the Peak Hygiene Plan also get a new replacement blade to refill your lawnmower every three months so you make sure your trimmer stays fresh and clean, just like your business. The light's at the end of the tunnel, and you can treat yourself by for making it through quarantine with the lawnmower 3.0, get 20% plus free shipping, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code INC, that's a new code, INC at manscaped.com. That's 20% off at manscaped.com, free shipping with code INC. INC, use that code. Go there, check it out. They got a wide array of products. It's fantastic. They got some new stuff coming out we're going to be talking about next month. Code INC, 20% off at manscaped.com. And uh, trust me, you'll, you'll be thanking me and yourself when you get hooked up with Manscaped. We thank them for sponsoring the Wrestling Inc. podcast. Can't believe it's July, Raj. 2020, halfway and, over. And as I mentioned before, Manscaped, you could use it upstairs as well. I, I, I do it's it true. often. So, yeah, yeah. You, see, you see these uh, wings I'm sporting here on my head? Tomorrow... I got a date with the lawnmower 3.0 and uh, I'm going to be a new man when you see me here on Wednesday. I'm going to be like 10 pounds lighter. That's how much hair I got going on. And it grows so fast. Yeah. Hyper aware of how fast it grows. Yeah. So we got a lot of news items. Um, why don't we, Matt, uh, obviously he is on his way. Why don't we cover the Tessa Blanchard news before yeah, we get into Raw? And I think Matt should this. be here by then. So conventional wisdom said when Tessa parted ways with Impact... Uh, that because of the controversy she had earlier this year, maybe not the hot free agent she would have been, say, a year ago. Uh, what are you hearing? Well, the word is that WWE has sent feelers to Tessa. So, um, I mean, she was there, you know, a few years ago with the Mae Young Classic. Uh, she impressed people with her ring work, but uh, apparently they felt she had an attitude problem and de declined on signing her. She went to Impact. Uh, there was some controversy uh, that came out earlier. Was it earlier this year or was it last year? I'm all, it's been, it, it's hard to tell. I think it was in January. I know it feels like 20 years ago. Right, yeah. Uh, over comments she made. She has denied that she made those comments. Uh, she did, uh, you know, she did admit that she had an altercation with another female wrestler years ago. Uh, but there were allegations that she had used a racial swear. She denied it. And, you know, Impact didn't take any action and, you know, believed her side of the story. Uh, other people that work for Impact, Tommy Dreamer, others uh, said that they believed her as well. And since then, you know, in Impact, I haven't heard any negative stories about her. Uh, um, while there, she's turned into what many would people would say in the ring probably one of the best women in the world, if not the best. And I mean, she is the is, main champion, not the main women's champion, the main impact champion impact world champion which does make it seem i mean we talked about this with matt um on the last podcast all the more insane that she wasn't sending in videos uh, where she's uh, isolating in mexico that she essentially wasn't trying to participate as champ in tv even if she couldn't be there in person there might have been some other issues sure so uh i, I think there are I, I think impact side is that they asked her to do stuff and she didn't send it. So, I mean, but who, who knows what else there is. I, I think there was, it was on both sides. They were, they were having some dis disagreements. So, uh, but yeah, her contract was coming up anyway. I think it's up tomorrow. Uh, so when they just knew that she wouldn't be able to make slam anniversary, they just decided to terminate her early and uh, she is now a free agent. Is slam anniversary a great name or a terrible name? I can't decide. Uh, hmm. Or is it so bad it's good? It's kind of like Slambury. You remember that? WCW? Yeah. Um, I never liked it. You know, as far, you know the WCW pay-per-view names I like. Starcade, well, I like. Great American Bash. They're bringing back it. your favorite on NXT. They right? are. They are. You've been saying, for as long as I've been doing this podcast, you've been saying, why aren't they doing Great American Bash? I don't know. But it's not the same. <laughs> I know. I you know. know. It's got to be done outside or, you know, it's got to have a summer theme. We'll, we'll see what they do with the set. So, yeah, um, let's talk real quick about the, the AEW um, ratings and versus NXT. Um, 
NXT with a big win last week. Big win. And Meltzer I mean, tried to attribute that to the lead-in, like SVU, the SVU lead-in. Oh, not not last week. Uh, the the week before, I think Meltzer was trying to attribute. Wasn't it that to the... I thought today? He said the TNT movie that was on before AEW Dynamite last week was the reason why, like the ratings for that were so bad, there was no carryover audience. I'll, I'll see if I can find the tweet. Okay, because yeah, that's not correct. Because AEW actually opened uh, with seven hundred forty four thousand viewers, so it opened well. It just dropped to, gosh, it dropped to. I believe it was 550, yeah, 552,000 viewers by the end. Uh, the Chris Jericho Orange Cassidy segment, that was the last segment of the night. That was actually the lowest rated quarter in the history of the show. Uh, NXT, they did big numbers for that triple threat match between Finn Balor, Keith Lee, and Johnny Gargano uh, for the number one contendership. So, AE, I mean, NXT with a decisive win, the biggest margin that they've ever had. And I mean, shocking. I mean, I thought it was a good show, but I didn't think it was. Yeah, I didn't feel anything that big with AEW, but I didn't think it was going to get trounced the way it did. Um, we'll have to see this week. Maybe it's an outlier. Um, if, you know, AEW, they have uh, night one of Fighter Fest uh, this Wednesday. NXT has night one of the Great American Bash. Both on paper don't, I don't think either look that big compared to the night twos. Um, I mean, you do have C Cody versus Jake Hager. Um, which is probably, the, probably their biggest match on that night. They also have Hangman and Page versus the Best Friends. The Best Friends are not really ratings movers. So, um, but you know, Omega and Page in a title who, defense should help. Who cares? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> what, what's going on with what you said about Meltzer using this excuse as a lead-in? Did people like attack that? Uh, they did. I'm trying to find the tweet. It was it was interesting because I was like, I've never heard that That's logic. Reaching, brother. That's some severe reaching. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, Meltzer usually reaches when AEW doesn't do well one week or, you know, and, <laughs> he doesn't do well. And I am I admit, before we even start these Wednesday shows, I'm an AEW homer. I tell everybody that. But I'm, I wouldn't I'm, say that. I'm wasn't impartial. Meltzer, now, I'm, now I'm looking at this. Was it Meltzer? I could swear I saw that was from Meltzer today talking about the lead-in. If it wasn't him, I apologize. Uh, maybe it was Wade Keller or someone along oh, those lines. <laughs> I don't know. I swear I thought it was Meltzer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, literally the theory I saw yeah, was that, well, I SVU pulled a big rating, and whatever movie was on before Dynamite didn't. Hey, you, WWE peaked at the end. It wasn't at the beginning. Yeah. So the lead-in doesn't matter. Yes. AEW dropped from beginning to end. So the, the lead-in right. wouldn't matter. But, yeah. You know, for AEW is their lowest uh, audience and their lowest rating in 18 to 49 in the history so, of the show. So, and by, by, by the way, Slammiversary is a cool name because it gives a newer <laughs> company and a a sense of history, even though it was new. Think about True. it. True. Okay. And the word Slam is in it, so that's always cool. It's wrestling. Slambury was the WCW yeah. version one where they had the legends come, right? Yeah, it was Slambury, a legends reunion. Yeah, but Slammiversary is supposed to be the anniversary of TNA. Right. No, Even I get it. It's had like five years. <laughs> but they, what are they called? Impact. Yeah, Impact. yeah, Impact. I hated that decision. I Because I, we were always told about, you know, the TNA acronym, Total Nonstop Action. It's not what it, the other one means. And I never saw somebody balk because of the acronym TNA. I, I thought it was clever at and first. And then all of a sudden, at, a, yeah. at, a, at, at first. But then out of left field, when it was way finally TNA got some like brand identification and then they changed it to impact. I was like, guys, this is like three years too late. Yeah. And if they changed it to like impact championship wrestling or something like that, where it's three letters, like every major sports is three letters, right? Yes. NBA, NFL, yes. UFC, yes. WWE. Uh, I think just impact Do wrestling. It doesn't. What's that? I, I mean, I think this is where this is awesome. I mean, like chance start because what do you chant? Impact, impact, right, yeah. impact. Like that's terrible. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit. By the way, we got some great uh, additional intel on ratings, Matt. After Friday, when I gave sort of that overview of oh, how I think the I Nielsen's that. worked. Thank you. Just yeah, we including someone from a secret Nielsen family. Reached that was out awesome. I felt like I, I was know. in the know. Thank know. you for that. Exposing the business. It's crazy. I showed my wife that. Was it yeah. someone on Facebook? Uh, no, no, on uh, the Twitters. No, oh, okay. Because I've I've heard I've talked to some people that are a part of the Nielsen rating systems, and uh, they kind of explain how the process works and everything. It's crazy. But, um, I'm curious to see what tonight's going to be. 
I think tomorrow night will be down. You know, that's the thing when you can you can argue. I mean, clearly, uh, you know, ratings are like polls. You know, they're not going to be a hundred percent correct. There's going to be you know fluctuation. The, the larger your sample yeah. size, the more accurate it's going to be. The smaller, you know, when you're talking about shows that do fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, then a very small amount of people makes a difference. Um, but it is. You know, you do see the fluctuations being accurate with everything else with business. You know, usually you're not seeing ratings being way high while other aspects of business being down. It usually all correlates. So, yo, you guys need haircuts <laughs> tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, me and the manscaped. Spend you some do your hair- oh, uh, dude, your hair goes quick, very fast. It's only been like uh, three I weeks. I wish I had that problem. I'm getting mine this week, too. <laughs> all right, it's crazy. Tight, we'll, fade for, um, tight fade for Raj, a little one on the side, or what do you got? I, I'm, I'm thinking about going pretty short on the sides, Uh-oh, mixing it up out. a little. Look out. <laughs> I'm going to start shaving lines into my head. Yeah. A did that one, RG yeah. on the sides. Yep, yeah, Matt, did you, ever, did you ever do the lines? Yes. Are you kidding me? No, I did. Oh, my God. I gotta, I'll find them. My <laughs> freshman year and mom at basketball. Yeah. Uh, like photo, whatever you call it, for, for the profile photo for the basketball, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Media guides. Yeah. I thought I was so gangster. Dude, I put lines in my eyebrows. <laughs> vanilla Ice style. I did the yeah. same freshman but year. But Vanilla high Ice was 10 years removed. <laughs> yeah, I did this in that 1991, was... was when I did it. Okay, when it was cool. Brother, we're talking 2000. No, we're talking 96. Come on. Oh. Yeah, I, I yeah. have no excuse. No excuse. I have. One, one time I did it, accidentally shaved half my eyebrow off and had to use like mascara to kind of draw it back on. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. It's really bad. Thankfully, there are no photos of that anywhere. <laughs> oh, all right, raw. What do you yes. think, Matt? I th- <laughs> I heard some of your comments before you guys a little bit. Just just that we're talking about a swamp match. We're talking about Big Show having multiple segments. No, this was not good. I did not like tonight's show. Um, again, if I didn't have to do this podcast, I mean, I'm not trying to be a cool guy. I'm not. I, I would not have watched tonight's show. Raj, we were getting more engagement from our, our fans and community talking about the Police Academy movies on Twitter than Raw. <laughs> Dr. Sleep, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, like, because I, I actually liked Raw the last two weeks, you know, the two weeks before. Um, did you like it or did you think it was a step up? I liked the one with Christian. Um, I, I did like that one. You, the whole episode or that? Yeah, I thought that whole episode was pretty good. Uh, last week I thought it was a step up. Not as good as the week before, but uh, to, you know, tonight I, I just had a hard time watching it. You're in bad shape when Big Show is pulling multiple segments. It's just not going to be good. Yeah, no it just shows the lack of star power that they have Like as far as like a younger guy that could pull this that many is, segments. This is why pushing the brand before a, a main talent does not work. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't seen the mega stars since nope. you know since John Cena. Cena. Yeah. yeah, Roman was almost there. I think if they let Roman, if they cut the chains, you know, let him let him run loose and you know let him be himself. I think he could get there. He has the charisma, and everyone likes him. Yes, and he's good. He's a good worker. Yeah. So Dolph Ziggler, Andrew McIntyre, Sasha Banks, and Asuka, uh, Bailey out there with Sasha. They opened the show, this contract signing. Um, I mean, I could say this about the the feud between Dolph and Drew. At least it's just going to be short-lived. I just, I mean, we're Drew, Drew's going to win. Like, there's no... You think? Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what's the point of having something like this yeah. when... I, I wouldn't even bet a dollar on 100 to 1 odds. So, so if I was champion and I had some type of creative control, I would see like, okay, at least I'm, you guys are giving me, you're feeding me somebody sure. to give me another victory in an angle. I guess. I don't know. I might be reaching on that. But the story has to be good. Look, when we go to the movies, we know yeah. ultimately Batman's going to defeat the Joker. You know, Spider-Man is going to defeat the Green Goblin. It's a predictable story. Yeah, but yeah. what's the story of how we get there? That's what's interesting with Dolph. Yeah, Dolph is like, um, like Batman going up against Kite Man, you know, yeah. or like one of those lesser <laughs> villains where you're just like, well, we know this is kind of an open and was, shut experience. Was there, a, was there an actual Kite Man? Oh, there, there's a Kite Man. He has a kite <laughs> on his back and he flies. That's a shame. 
Uh, <laughs> but you know, if you're writing a story, you don't have, and you're you're trying to write someone getting to a championship match, you don't have them lose every match for the you know four months prior. Shit, it's actually more like nine months prior at least. Um, you're right. It's just not. It's just bad storytelling. It's better just give you know just give Drew this pay per view off. You could have given Braun the last pay per view off when he faced you know Miz and, and Morrison. Yep. Eddie Omeng, 499, saying, do you think WWE should bring back general managers for SmackDown and Raw? I was thinking about this the other day. When Daniel Bryan hosted SmackDown, and I've made this comparison before, if SmackDown was the Muppet show, he was like Kermit the Frog, and you could have a plot about Daniel Bryan dealing with everything going wrong that night, and a nice through line in a story, he was almost like the central character. And I think even with Stephanie and Mick Foley, it gave it some, uh, some consistency. Some development. All right. Much more important. You see the profile photo there? Can you guys <laughs> let me test your sports knowledge? This is important because this is a classic photo he's using in this profile photo. See, fans, that's why you got to watch our show, by the way. Um, <laughs> sincerely, guys, can either of you two tell me what that is? A, what is that from? Where did he take that photo from? I know nothing about sports. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Glenn, you too? No, I'm. Oh, yeah. Clearly, everything okay. about me screams sports guy. I can't <laughs> wait to tell you guys this. This is from Wilt that's still Chamberlain when he scored 100 points in one game, and he's holding up 100 in that wow. little piece of paper. And that's supposed to be Wilt's face that he put his own face on, which is very creative. Next, Eddie, I want to know why is it 14? What's 14? Why is that significant? Huh? There you go. Hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> eight, eight Sidebar. Points. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I, I, I think they should. I feel like if you want to make real competition between the shows, you need to have a figurehead. And also wrestlers just making matches on their own or they're like, oh, during the break it was announced that this match is on. It at, le- at least it gives someone the power to make matches. I don't think you should do the heel general managers again. That got old. Yeah. But, you know, if you have someone impartial like you had with Daniel Bryan, you had with Shane or Paige, um, I, I think I think it could work. Even with that, though, like I, I think because it's wrestling, I'm always all in. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean with my emotional investment? Like, I, uh, I look. This is a grown. Maybe because I wrestled, I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe I'm easy. I'm an easier mark that way because I know how hard it is to get people to emotionally invest. So therefore, I think I do it so freely and easily. Most times, more times than mm-hmm. not, and I'm and that is a very logical thing you both are saying. There should be a, a definitive matchmaker that calls it right down the middle, not random wrestlers are saying, hey, you want to wrestle tonight, bro? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, me versus you. Let's, you know, that crap. And even right. with Zelina and MVP, like all these stories, I think if we had a good central authority figure for them to play off of, I think, I'm telling you, I think it would. Oh, Zelina could do some damage. Yes, she could. It would make the show feel more consistent because we would have like a main character as the glue that held it together. Yeah. By the way, so the 14 Damn. was 14 threes. Come from, on, thanks, son. Poet you, Andrews. Hit four, you hit 14 threes? I think Wilt. Did Wilt do? Was that the, an actual picture or no? No. The, the, okay. it's, it's a photo, but he replaced the 100 with 14. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Terry Allen Jr., 512, Super Chat. Murphy and Austin eventually need to talk in the ring developing their characters rather than Seth each week. Austin Theory's character is zero. Um, yeah, Austin Theory, I don't think it was on the show tonight. I didn't even realize that until someone pointed it out. Fine by me. Um, with Seth, this is just starting to seem tedious, man. Every time he's going out there. Starting? I mean, <laughs> it was never great. That's the point. It was never great. This, there, was no, uh, there was no peak high point era of the Monday Night Messiah. It's just been a middle to a low. And it's just, you know, it's just the same formula he's been stuck in where it's him and his group against, you know, earlier this year was Viking Raiders and, and Samoa Joe and who else was it? There was someone else in there. I mean, maybe Aleister Black. Now it's them against, you know, uh, Humberto Carrillo, Aleister Black still. Uh, it's just the same thing they're doing week after week. It's just another variation of that match. Uh, Seth, his delivery, it's forced. It doesn't, doesn't come across as natural. Uh, he doesn't come across as a cult leader. And so, I don't know, I just, I wish they'd drop it. I think Seth is so much better without it. Yeah. So, uh, this contract signing, not going to believe this, ended in a brawl. Shocking. It started with a brawl. That was a little different. And ended with it. Yeah. 
I mean, Dolph, he, he, he cut a good promo, which is fine. It's just no one believes for a second that he's going to win. Yeah. Nobody. This mixed tag that they main evented the show with, I mean, okay, whatever. We'll talk about it. But uh, Big Show was calling out Randy Orton instead, interrupted by Zelina Vega, Andrade, and Angel Garza. Uh, yeah. Uh, he had interview, uh, interrupted their interview backstage before that. And um, they got into it. Vega made a threat. Oh, Ric Flair came out. What's Ric Flair doing there? Everyone's wearing masks tonight. Stuff's happening. Ric Flair just still on TV. Just chilling. Just, just chilling. chilling. <laughs> like nothing faces this man. No. Uh, Flair... I don't care if he wants to be there or what. You know, he... He died. He's over 70. He's had health issues. He should not be out there. Yes. Uh, then the Viking Raiders came out. Garza and Andrade met Eric and Ivar on the ramp. They started brawling. We went to commercial. Came back. We got the Viking Raiders versus Andrade and Angel Garza. Andrade and Angel Garza picking up the win. Uh, Garza. Well, then we had a big show uh, appearance here. No, I, t- I talked about that. Oh, you did. That's okay. Sorry. I think that was probably originally meant for the Street Profits who weren't there for tonight, so they just threw Big Show in. Is my, that's my guess. I don't know. Yeah. Because it seemed, it seemed very strange that Big Show was out there. I mean, he did do a backstage thing with them last week, but I don't know. Uh, here's a super chat that's going to be much more entertaining than Raw tonight. Matt Morgan, when you get a second, we got a question for you. Who is the funniest, diff- most difficult performer to cut a promo with on TNA? Huh? I mean, he's probably coming up with that because a lot of the talk had been about who can make Undertaker like laugh and break kayfabe. I'm guessing in the Last Ride documentary is where I'm guessing he got that from. Maybe, maybe not. Um, crap! I've never really thought of that. Um, I, I all I can speak of is my one pro. This one promo with Steiner I had that I wish I could get back. It was one he just completely emasculated me. I think I texted and, you after that. You probably did. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> did. All my friends did. And I had to be a baby face. Steiner was supposed to be a baby face. Vince sold this to me, and I was excited to work Steiner. I like Scott. Get along great with him. But we were supposed to be like an athlete versus athlete. Former college athlete, made good in college, and became a pro wrestler type of crap. And Scott Steiner and his brother I saw do that. Me and my brothers grew up watching that. And went the real, not real, but the more traditional sports route first. Got scholarships. Watch the Steiners do their thing in pro wrestling. If they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. That's where we're supposed to kind of go with that. I was. And then when I saw some of Scott's stuff, what he was going to say, I remember pulling Vince said, Vince, he's killing me. I can't just sit there and not say anything back. He goes, mm-hmm. bro, your comeback is when you win. Don't you understand? You want people to feel sorry for you. You're seven feet tall. It's impo- <laughs> which he's, he's right. It's impossible to get sympathy on me. But I wish I, the way I wish I can go back to this, though, is realize that that wasn't sympathy I was getting. As it was, come on, Matt, what the hell are you doing? Punch him in his face already. Right. What I should have done is walk up to Scott and have his head be like right in my chest and belly button and made a height joke. Something simple. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? That that, that I still would have gotten my comeuppance at that pay-per-view when I went when I won. But yeah. that's one I wish I could have got back. I hated that. Yeah. My fault for listening to. Not nothing against Vince either. Just my own. I, that's something I should have went with my own gut on. I know Bischoff always kind of says the same thing with, with giants, with big guys. That as a babyface, it's hard to build sympathy for them because they have all the advantages. So it, it makes it yeah. difficult. But you also can't sit there and take it. No. You know, Andre, talking Andre about wouldn't your do that. Girl. Right. talking about your girlfriend. I'm like, yeah. well, she's my wife. But all right, let's not. Now's not the time to correct them, Matt. <laughs> it, should, it should have been like that Andre Piper thing on Piper's Pit. Do you remember when Piper's going off and Andre still grabs him and they, they get separated? You know, so yes. you're still doing something, but yes. you're not, you're not punking him out yet. Yeah, yeah, man. But that's that's that that's, and I was at a point in my career where I was very comfortable with myself, and I should have just said, you know what? I know Vince said one thing, but I, I'm feeling something different right now. And that's on me. So, mm-hmm. so uh, Lana was back. Uh, stage. I'm oh, sorry. We saw how Lana helped Natalia beat Liv Morgan last week. We saw Ruby Riot try to have to live after the match. We saw the Iconics approach Ruby backstage. Uh, this was setting up a match with Ruby and one of the Iconics for later in the show. 
Um, then we saw Zelina Vega backstage trying to talk and draw and Angel Garza down. Ric Flair shows up and says they had a good win. He had an idea he wanted to talk to him about. Then we had a 24 7 title match, R Truth versus Akira Tozawa. And the Ninja, the Ninja gimmick is already on its way out, maybe, because uh, R Truth won this match and is now the 24 7 champion again. Oh, what could have been with the Ninjas? Yeah, and they kind of dropped that giant ninja, which was the most interesting thing about this. Well, anyway. Yep. <laughs> this second uh, hour. I mean, like, are we in the second hour yet, or are we still in the first? I, I'm talking about this, Raj. I'm just like, I watched this show. I know I remember these things happening. Good Lord, this is... This is like... The, and I, I feel like I've said this more and more. Like, this is the least consequential three hours of WWE TV in recent memory. Yeah, I thought like the first 30, 40 minutes was moving along fine. It, you know, it was, um, you knew where it was headed. You know, you, you kind of figured the heels were going to win in the main event. Uh, and in that case, you knew that Sasha going to pin Asuka. But man, this, the next like hour and a half that followed was just, it was just hell. Yeah, Rollins is backstage with Murphy holding Mysterio's mask because he has to make his most important statement to date and he has to do it now. Um, Seth Rollins and Murphy came out. Seth was smirking, carrying Ray's mask. I mean, what does this even mean? Like, okay, there's a feud. There's a feud between Rollins and Ray. Dominic's involved in this. Uh, they were interrupted by Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo. This led to Seth Rollins and Murphy versus Umberto. And Alistair, I just, like, what? what's the point? What's the payoff to all this? I mean, Dominic and Dominic's going to be holding Ray on his shoulders. His dad on his shoulders, standing tall over a defeated Seth Rollins at the end of this. Can we fast forward to that? Can we just get to that point and move on? You know, for how, how much time, how much time and effort they've spent to this angle, I do not care. And not I think Ray has, Ray has been good, but it's, Ray and it's Dominic so, are great. Yeah, but it's just so hokey and uh, um, yeah, we we lost Matt. We should he should be back here in a minute. Um, oh, and correction earlier, someone tweeted it was Alvarez uh, that tweeted about the ratings. Brian Alvarez. Mm. On Wrestling Observer. That's mm. what I was saying. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I don't. Raj, does anything make sense in this crazy world we live in? <laughs> it doesn't, but uh, th that really does make sense because AEW did worse as the show went on as opposed to at the beginning. But anyway. I feel it's different with uh, with TNT, like seeing the end of movies right before Dynamite starts as opposed to NXT where it's always NCIS or Law & Order. Yeah, Ma Matt, nice. we're hearing a... a a lot of background wind. noise. A lot of wind. Yes. Is it wind? Oh, that's weird. How about now? Now that's good. good. Matt, we'll spare you uh, talking about what we just talked about. Okay. It was the ninjas, bad. unless you really want to get into No, that. we were past that. We were talking about Rollins' promo oh, yeah. and trying to get Carrillo into the steel steps. Uh, in the brawl after this, Rollins and Murphy retreated uh, after the scuffle. What have uh, they done with Aleister Black? They kind of dropped the ball on him pretty hard. They gave him that big win over Lashley at WrestleMania. They've taken away his entrance. They're putting him in all these tag teams every week where he's he's not able to do much. He's He should be a singles guy. They need to break him away from this pack. They need to get him away from Humberto Carrillo. You know, they've jobbed that guy out to death. Let Al Aleister be his own guy and, and uh, be yep. the star that he can be. Yep. Aleister and Murphy should actually team up. They would look like a pretty cool tag team. They got nice similar looks. I don't think Alistair should be in a tag team. He just what's, what's he, he doing that now? Loner look. What's he doing now? He's, he's not a loner. Yeah, but I, Murphy's not going to do anything for him. Murph, Murphy just he's a good he, Murphy's really good in the ring. Um but he doesn't have that charisma. And I think Alistair does. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I actually liked this promo with Lana in Ruby Riot, how Lana uh, was putting over Natalia. I just thought it was kind of different. Don't know where it's going. Yeah, Ruby Riot hasn't won a match. I, I can't tell if it's anywhere or just on Raw, but since February of last year. I saw it's been 11 losses since she returned to TV. Yeah. But Peyton Royce versus Ruby Riot, maybe that's 12 now, maybe 11, including tonight. Um, so I'm assuming Ruby and Liv are going to get the Riot Squad back together? Uh, you mean Ruby and Liv? Is that That's what, what you I said? said. Yeah. I thought you said Ruby and Lana. Um, I guess. I, I mean... Who cares? Yeah. 
We're all waiting for it, guys. <laughs> no, we're not. I do not like that group. That pop when the, the Riot Although, Squad gets back together. <laughs> Although, this was the best representation of Liv Morgan thus far, I would say, in that group. She I thought she was doing the most. She stuck yeah. out the most, I thought. Yeah, because I thought she was doing fine, you know, a couple months ago, and then they just dropped the she ball. She was. Yeah. Yeah. We see that I mean, a lot. It's talk about like a reunion. It's like if you found out tomorrow, like guys, LMFAO is getting back together. It's like LMFAO broke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not the Shield reuniting or the NWO. Yeah. <laughs> Did LMFAO broke break up? I feel like they had a pretty good thing going there for. Uh, like a I year. thought they had one song. They had like three. Then they had a song with Lil Jon, that shot song. Mm. That every time I've been in a bar in the last ten years, they're always playing that song. Anyhow, this that conversation, which we're not going to discuss, would be more interesting than Raw was tonight. Uh big show backstage talking to Charlie about the two on one handicap match, uh, seeing if he thinks it's a trap with Randy Orton lurking. Um then we went to said match. Andrade and Angel Garza versus Big Show. Big Show getting the win. Shocking. You didn't see that comment? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are pushing the story that Andrade and Angel Garza are, aren't getting along. But to have Big Show beat two of your, like, the guys that have the most screen time on your shows in the past, like, three months. And to have them, you know, just get punked out. Even though I'm very bored by Big Show matches, can you not agree? That physically, did that not look incredibly believable? That he could beat the boat, beat the brakes off of both? Yeah, that's huh. why you shouldn't do it. That's why you shouldn't put that match together. You know? Uh, okay. okay. You know, I'd, I'd have Big Show in there with uh, Keith Lee or someone like that. To, yeah. Yeah. You know. Keith Lee should be squashing the Big no. Show. No. Big Show versus Keith Lee? But Keith Lee winning. Yeah. Okay. But he's working on it right now. But okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Dijakovic, even Dijakovic, I don't know how... He, he looks pretty big next to the big show. I, I, I forgot think. Dominic Dijakovic existed until this moment. You just said his name. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be heading to Raw. Someone's asking, Matt, about if you still have the blue robe from OVW. Just blue robe. Watching old with you and Bowen's... I was not in Kenny Bowen's stable, Dorian. I was against Kenny Bowen's stable. He was the proverbial th thorn in my side in OVW. Um, my blue rope. Yes, of course I do. Yeah, I definitely still have it. You should, should wear it one night. No, <laughs> I should never. <laughs> do you ever put on the old gear? Just bust it no, out? It, it, listen, guys, it wasn't over then, and it's damn sure not over now. <laughs> <laughs> Robes used to be so cool, though, when Rick Rude and Paul Orndorff, they looked, it looked awesome back in the day. Yeah. The only thing cool about my robe was I, like, transitioned it to the pyro when I was at TNA. That's all it was good for. Yeah. Um, so, after Big Show got that shocking upset victory over Andrade and Angel Garza in that handicap match. Uh, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander were backstage with Apollo Crews. Our truth walked up, talked about how nervous he is over his 24-7 title. Does he finally get away from Akira Tozawa and the ninjas? Or did he? But he's paranoid of Cedric, Ricochet, and Crews being ninjas. They did some more comedy. Truth ran off with the title. Then we had Apollo Crews versus MVP, with MVP picking up the win. He needs a win. He needs a win in here somewhere. He does. They, they, I, I mean, I don't think so. Just because they beat an MVP every week. So his first win shouldn't be against one of your title holders. Uh, okay, yes. For that reason, yes. But he, You're right. For that reason, yes. But he needs wins. So when he puts over better talent that needs that win from an MVP, it means more. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of... He's Dolph. He's Dolph that can talk. Right. And I think that's he's supposed to be more of a manager now. And the manager shouldn't be beating the guy you're setting up for your, your right. client. You know. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so then we had Ricochet versus Bobby Lashley. Kind of an intense match. This was good. I liked this. Yeah. Yeah, I Lashley looked good. awesome. Yeah. Very credible with the win. Remember, like a year ago, when we thought Ricochet was going to be a huge star. He should be. I agree. What has happened? What went wrong? 
Do you remember when people earlier this year when I was... Roz wants to kill me right now because of my uh, audio. I already see it. And I feel it through the screen. <laughs> it is a little hard to hear you right now. <laughs> I'm yelling! <laughs> um, but uh, remember Ricochet when they were saying, oh, he's getting the big push. He's facing Brock Lesnar. And I would remember saying then, Brock's going to kill him, and it's it's downhill for Ricochet after that. And... I mean, that's pretty much exactly what happened. <laughs> if I don't pat myself on the back or nothing. Like, well, oh no, it's not. It's just knowing the patterns. It's knowing that. Well. Yeah, it just, it is. I mean, you know how when WWE, when they're done with someone, uh, or they're, you know, they're, they haven't get squashed by a champion. It's not like they're getting a rub. It's that they're, they're done with them and they're phasing them out. We said that, you know, we've said that with. Many other talents. There you Leon's go, Duncan. Leon's a Duncan. Two dollars super chat. Wishful thinking. They all realize they need MVP. What do you guys yes. say about that? MVP has been like the glue holding a good quarter of this show together these past couple months. He's he would have been. A, he would have been a good GM candidate if they'd gone a different direction. Yes. Yes. Um. Speaking of patterns. Raj, Sasha Banks got the win on Asuka in this mixed tag match that closed the show tonight. Drew McIntyre and Asuka versus Dolph Ziggler and Sasha. This leads me to believe, based on, uh, well, your prediction, that uh, Asuka is going to retain at Extreme Rules. That, that, would be the, uh, that would be the formula, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, Drew, you know, in a way, this was technically a loss for Drew, so this would have been his first loss, uh, in forever, definitely this year. But I never count. Listen, I never counted when I was in a singles tag team match as a loss to me. Yeah, and and it's definitely not. It's not. It's it's not a loss. And by the way, that's an AEW uh, flaw in their records. By the way, in my opinion. Yeah. I think Moxley's one loss in AEW. He has one, right? And I think that's because of, he he was in a tag match where he wasn't pinned. That's not fair. Yeah, I, uh, that shouldn't count. Um, Rocky Baya in the chat with a sad face saying, uh, "O-Town broke up. Uh, O-Town got back together a couple years ago. I think they're still together." It's all you Liquid Dreams fans. Good news for you. Uh, we got a uh, Peter Bahi wants us to talk about Cobra Kai on Netflix. $2 not, super chat. They have not announced a release date yet, I believe. Yeah, there's yeah, there's not really much else to say right now, except, yeah, the, the, all, the previous two seasons will be going there, too. Uh, Justin Lopez, has anyone leaked out if Ricochet pissed off anyone backstage? He had a WWE title match versus Brock. Usually after that, a mid-carder doesn't fall, fall down the ranks like this. Uh, it's happened quite a few times. I mean, a lot of times we see it happen every year with Dolph. Um, but, yeah, no, I think just Vince lost faith in him. You saw it with Cedric earlier. You know, last year he was feuding with AJ Styles, and and then, you know, that that was quickly dropped. And I mean, you I see hope, it all the time. I hope Ricochet pissed somebody off. I hope Ricochet kicked Kevin Dunn in the nuts or did something to, to deserve the way they've treated him because at least he could say that he earned this poor treatment he's received from the office. Yeah, so another thing about Ricochet. Yeah. He has a network special this Sunday, and he hadn't been on Raw for a month up until this. That's true. Yeah. Um, so we ended the show with Dolph Ziggler, Sasha Banks, and Bailey. Locking arms, standing tall. Boo. Yeah. So, I like that they're... I don't know why you guys thought this was a good episode. I you didn't. didn't. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what? Slow uh, your roll there, Blue Brain. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys opened up when I was off camera that you guys were saying that it was good. No, I was saying no. it was interesting how the last couple weeks moved fast, and this was like a slow uh, motion watching paint dry. Terrible Trey 89 <laughs> super chat saying, didn't catch a soda. Did I miss anything? No, you missed no. nothing. Yeah, I, I, there is nothing... I'm trying to think. Is there anything that happened on the show that you even need to see a recap of to you know, to to fill you in? And I, Rick, I don't think so. Ricochet, Bobby, I'd go back and watch. That's about it. 
Yeah, as far as a match, it was a fun match for sure. But as far as storyline wise, you didn't miss anything. I'm not touching that super chat, Leonza, because that hashtag you put in there. I, I refuse to acknowledge that. Oh jeez. Leonza. <sighs> trying to get trying to get heat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that uh, was that was raw. Sumed be uh, saying where scoops Labar when you need him. Scoops Labar's enjoying we... his Monday, not watching this garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what it else was... do we got, Raj? Give me anything else. Give me anything All else right. we could talk about here tonight. Anything. I got people in the chat that want to talk about Cobra Kai. They want to talk about Dr. Sleep, which you watch. You saw. <laughs> I did. Uh, well, first thing, to tomorrow there's going to be an announcement on NXT UK. Uh, it, it hasn't been in, you know, uh, they haven't been running shows uh, as of late since, since COVID. Uh, there have been some controversies recently with some of the talent. Some of the talent were let go. Uh, but uh, there was a report by uh, Gary Cassidy of Sports Kita that WWE has plans to bring NXT UK back, running empty arena shows within the next two months or so. So, so maybe maybe yeah. that's the announcement. I hope so for the talents, uh, you know, for their sake. Because they do have a, a pretty good roster. It is different. I like their style of wrestling. I need to watch it more, to be honest. But... Every time I do, I like it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we mentioned Fighter Fest and Great yeah. American Bash. Let me just run down these cards real quick. Fighter Fest night one. It's MJF mm -hmm. and Wardlow against Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Private Party against Santana Ortiz. Hikaru Shida versus Penelope Ford. Kenny Omega and Hangman Page versus the Best Friends. And then Cody versus Jake Hager. And at the Great American Bash, it's Roderick Strong against Dexter Loomis. In a strap match, Aaliyah and Robert Stone versus Rhea Ripley in a handicap match. Ripley has to join them if she loses. Tegan Knox versus Dakota Kai versus Candice LeRae versus Mia Yim in an elimination match to crown a new number one contender. Sasha Banks versus Io Shirai in a non-title match. I think that's going to be the highlight of the show. And then Oni Lorcan versus Timothy Thatcher. So, outside of the names, it's not like they seem like really that extra special episodes. Uh, you know, I'm sure the matches will be will be strong but as far as name value you know name star power goes doesn't seem like anything that exciting no the nxt is a weak card i'm just going to be honest the sasha versus zio sasha versus zio no not nxt i'm so sorry AEW. oh yeah 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 that's basically cody and jake hager and again i you, don't you... care about that match jake hager is not beating him yeah how about orange cassidy versus jericho that'll be entertaining but that's okay. not that's the next week but the card that he announced, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, best friends for the tag uh, team titles with all those great tag teams. That's your representation of a tag team title match with that tag team division. Come on. I know. Uh, Terrence Witted, $5 super chat. Which movie villain would be a great wrestling heel? Drago. Oh, 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 oh yes. That's a tough one. I, I can't beat that. I Bane? think Bane. Bane. Yeah, Bane doesn't talk. Yeah, he does. Drago didn't either. He no, Bane doesn't. talks, but they got the voice muffler thing, and he's got the oh, and weird he had the weird voice. Yes. Have you guys watched the Harley Quinn animated series? No, that's it's no. it's adult. It's super adult. Like they're swearing. <laughs> Bane is the funniest wow. thing on that show. <laughs> yeah, Wait, it's where so do I good. See that? Uh, it's where on uh, it? HBO Max, I think, or DC streaming, or I think they're showing it on Cartoon Network now, even like a censored version on Cartoon Network. It's so funny. Uh, but yeah, Bane is hilarious. Like, it's such a good show. Okay. Hey, I, should, I should throw in there any Rocky villain, really, because Apollo Creed would have been great in wrestling. Oh, so, Mr. T. Clubber yeah, Lang. Clubber Lang. You know what? I, I'll take that back. Clubber Lang would be the best. Clubber, yeah. yeah. Such a good heel. He was awesome. Because he, he has it all. He has the promo ability and uh, the look. You the know. look. Do you remember how over Mr. T? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to reveal some more embarrassing Matt Morgan moments really quick. In first grade. In first grade. Okay. I wore, and I begged my mom to let me do it, wear a jean jacket vest. I cut the sleeves off with no muscles, by the way. Um, and it gets better. I found a chain in our garage, unbeknownst to my family, put it in my backpack to take to school, and wore it around my neck. It gets better. And a Mr. T headband. It was green and white. 
and a green and green and white Mr. T wristbands. And I thought I was the coolest kid ever, and I was getting clowned worse than I ever. Oh, it was bad. At least you need to go uh, for the mohawk. Yeah. Or did you? Guys, <laughs> that's pretty bad. That's up there with me dressing as D. Snyder from Twisted Sister for Halloween. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Mr. T was awesome, though. I think about Hulk Hogan got the rub from him. You know, yeah, that's how big totally. Mr. T was. Yeah. Mr. T was the biggest attraction of the first WrestleMania. Yeah, I remember yeah. I saw some bad yeah. movies with Mr. T in it because just because he was in it, like DC Cab or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. That you know, I've never seen DC Cab. Yeah, I, I don't remember it. I, I just remember watching it as a kid, but I can. We tell were you watching any... uh, like an old music yeah, video thing and. Oh, A-Team, A-team was, was huge. awesome. I mean, I, we did the experience so at Universal cool. Studios with the, the A-Team, and I, I thought it was going to be the real Mr. T when we were at it. And they had a guy, you know, they had the guy dressed up as Mr. T from far away. I was like, oh, my God, we're going to meet him. And it was, you know, a lookalike. It sucked. When I'm about DC Cab, so I was watching this music video thing, and Irene Cara did the song from DC Cab. And how did she go from, like, fame, like one of the biggest songs of 1980, I got a feeling yeah. from Flashdance, the biggest song of 83, and said, I'm going to do the uh-huh. theme to DC Cab. Like, her management just sunk her singing career with that choice. I didn't Bro- even know that about DC yeah. Cab. She sung. Yeah, I was like, it's an okay song, but still, it's like, wrong wrong choice there. Uh, so much so, her producer wrote, take my breath away from Top Gun. She wasn't even considered to sing that. They gave it to mm-hmm. the girl from Berlin. Anyhow, uh, Mr. T. Oh, Mr. T. Remember the Different Strokes episode? <laughs> Remember in Arnold was little T yeah. shaved his head. Yep. Yes, now you watch did. it, you go like it's a bad bald cap. But at the time we had we had yes. small black and white TVs. Who knew? Yeah. No, yes. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we got? We got any other super chats? Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any other wrestling related questions, I think we cut. You know, most of the major wrestling stories were last week. This week it's you know, thankfully settling down a little bit. So we teased this on Twitter, Raj. Uh, Matt Morgan, favorite Police Academy movie and favorite Police Academy character? Oh, boy. Uh, definitely the guy who made all the noises, right? Michael Winslow, yeah. who Raj didn't oh, know that's by name. You. I thought you meant Carl Winslow. Yeah. No. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know his real name. He was awesome. <laughs> like, we were supposed to like Steve Gutenberg the best, obviously, but no, yes. I like the guy who made the noises the best. I like Bobcat Goldwith. Oh, he was good, too. He yeah. was. There's honorable mention. Yeah. Three was my favorite, but that was also because I my parents never let me, let me watch one, and I don't think I ever did. Or if I did, I, I don't really remember it. Oh, Police Academy 1 is not for children. Yeah. That's part of why it was great to watch it as a kid. Because you're That's like, I'm why. not supposed to be watching this. Yes. Yeah. Not at all. Um, <sighs> oh, yeah. Uh, Luke Gallows and uh, Carl Anderson are joining Impact Wrestling. Why? Why? <laughs> Uh, so they apparently have a deal where they they'd be allowed to work New Japan as well. So I'm there I'm guessing that's the answer. big reason. And you know, that's, a, AEW does that for some talent, but for like the Jerichos and the the Moxleys, I don't think they'd do that. I, I I can tell you for sure, but I don't think they'd do that for Gallows and Anderson. So that so for Gallows and Anderson's perspective, New Japan is their anchor. That's the big payday, and the TNA is just the fluff on the side. Getting yeah, money I mean, in the U.S. Who do you? How much yes. do you think the highest impact wrestling talent is making? A dollar fifty cents. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd be shocked if anyone was making over one hundred fifty grand a year in impact. I, I hate saying that as an old company I worked for. I don't like, but it's not the company I work for. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, you would think if they do, it's, it's a Rob Van Dam or you know? Ken Shamrock. And they probably have trade offs. They oh, can work in indie okay. dates. They probably own one hundred percent of their merchandise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. But I was gonna say, you know, RVD and Ken Shamrock, they also probably, it, it's not they need that income. It's just extra money for them, I would think. Uh, Jay Kane, we talked about Tessa Blanchard at the top of the show. It's all just rumors right now. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. Um, Ryan right. Ramirez, five dollars, saying I predict AEW being on top of the next five years because of WWE creative. There is almost an okay. argument that AEW doesn't even have to get better. They could stay exactly the same. WWE is just going to get worse. AEW hasn't been kill- knocking them dead lately either, though. Their creative has been suffering as well. Uh, they haven't. I mean, how many guys seem big right now, you know, outside of Jericho? 
And that's, uh, you know, you got Omega in a tag team, who should be one of their top stars. Uh, you got a lot of goofy stuff with the best friends and, you know, wrestlers from different planets and, and things like that. Um, that's not, you know, you could, it's, uh, you know, wrestling always has some comedy, but if you're trying to tune in to get the largest audience possible and not the small fringe audience, you need to, you need to kind of get beyond this, you know, this indie wrestling bubble. And I, I think they, they really need to do that and, and really make stars that are larger than life and not just can't be funny, like the dark order, things like that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to James Potts in the chat room for saying Biff Tannen would be a great wrestling heel. Oh, that's a great call. Yeah. Seriously. Yes. He was such a jerk. Yes. You can almost see Mojo pulling off something like that. We're talking about the other night. I think that's what Baron Corbin needs to pivot and do a little bit more of that. Yeah. Uh, Xavier Leone, $5. Do you think any champion will still be champion once fans return? Yeah, Drew. Drew probably has the best shot, yeah. Moxley. Yeah. Ross McLean, four ninety nine. dollars uh, Rumble winners and Mania main event predictions for next year. Would you also predict full stadiums arenas by then? It, it, it's full. Not full. I think it's too too hard to p predict two months from now, much less you know. If not seven, the eight, Rumble, nine, and help us all if this is the case, I could see them almost waiting if it goes on long enough and making something like the Rumble or Mania their return to live yeah. events. They're planning to return next month to live events. They have a place booked in Lakeland, Florida, and they announced that uh, they have rebooked. Uh, hold on a second. Just tonight, this came out. Justin actually had tweeted this out. Uh, the raw that was lost to the pandemic in April in Cleveland is now back on sale for September 28th, and they are saying that tickets from April will be honored. And we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, oh, uh, Rumble and main event, Mania main event. See, I think not a lot's going to change who the top talent is between now and the Rumble and Mania next year. I think it's going to be the same guys and girls in the mix, you know? Yeah, but you remember this last year, Goldberg was thrown in at the last oh, minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. And Drew, you know, he was kind of a last-minute push. So... Peter, we did mention your uh, Cobra Kai super chat. You, you blinked and you missed it. Yeah. Um, there's no details. There's no release date. If there was news, we would share it with you. We are looking forward to this. In fact, some would say Cobra Kai is what gets me up in the morning. Certainly not Monday Night Raw, that's for sure. Uh, and as soon as there's news, we'll cover it here on Wrestling Inc. Uh, what else do we got? That's, uh, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty much it. The Undertaker. Uh, if you guys haven't watched The Last Ride yet, definitely check that out. That was pretty amazing. I feel like I'm watching The Last Ride the way they're showing so much of it on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. I mean, that uh, that first hour of SmackDown with the, the, the Boneyard I don't match. Was... I, I don't disagree with that. I think I'm smart. It was, yeah. And that was the highest rated hour they've done since WrestleMania. Told you. I told you that, that would be a popper rating. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, Wednesday night. Great American Bash on NXT, Fighter Fest on AEW, myself, Matt Morgan, and Scoops Labar. Hope all the Labarbarians tune in for Wednesday night's show. It's going to be epic. Yep. <laughs> for all the latest and news. And signing off. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, until then, stay tuned to Wrestling Inc. for all the latest news. He's at VP Matt Morgan. He's at Raj Geary underscore 303. I'm Acklin Rubenstein. We'll catch you back here Wednesday on.